a todos y de nuevo bienvenidos a Expo Estudiar Online 2020. Eh, hemos tenido pues ya tres días casi eh, de una feria súper exitosa donde hemos tenido muchísimas visitas de estudiantes. Los volvemos a invitar a todos a que entren eh, y eh, exploren pues los stands. Es muy importante que para la conferencia que vamos a ver ahora, eh, Den, para las preguntas, den clic en el, la bolita del chat que aparece en sus pantallas en la parte inferior derecha. Eh, hoy estamos con Omir Onari. Eh, él es el director regional de Navitas Australia, eh, que es una entidad eh, que tiene tanto idiomas como educación superior eh, en Australia. Él va a hacer la charla en inglés eh, y se los voy a, a presentar ya. Hi, Om, oh, eh, Omir, how are you? Hi, Carlos. I'm really well. How are you today? Very good. So, um, yeah, let's start. We are, we are really, really excited to have you here. And, uh, well, just let us know about your information. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carlos, um, to you and your colleagues for arranging this session and giving me the opportunity to speak with your students. I'm, I'm really, really excited to do this. Um, and so what I will do is speak a little bit about higher education opportunities in Australia. Um, there is so much to talk about that we could do it for hours and hours. And I won't do that. I'll keep it as brief as possible and also allow your students um, some uh, time for question and answers at the end. Um, Navitas is an organization, an education organization that was started 25 years ago. Um, and since then, it has been very successful in bringing, amongst other things, Australian education to the, uh, to the students of the world. Um, the reason I am so passionate about Australia is um, My parents uh, immigrated there just after I was born, and I grew up there myself, and I studied through the university system, and now I work for this Australian company and assist other students from around the world to discover what an absolutely huge and positive impact studying in a place like Australia and choosing Australia as the destination for your higher education can have not just in terms of how great it is to study there, but on the whole rest of your life. So in Australia, we have so many courses to choose from in the higher education sector. If you have dreams of going into engineering, um, and the animal sciences, economics, genetics, The novel and new fields like artificial intelligence or traditional fields like mechanical and chemical engineering, all the options are available to you. Again, the traditional meets the new, marketing, management, food sciences, if you want to go into media and film production, if you want to go into health sciences, medicine, all of these courses, there are no limitations to where your aspirations can take you um, when you choose to study in Australia. My presentation has many words on the screen and I don't expect the students to read them. So I will just summarize by telling you that when we think about Australia, it evokes many important images for us. When I think about Australia, I think about what you see there, magnificent beaches, friendly people, a welcoming culture, a multicultural place, endless career opportunities, a fun life, a happy life. But equally, let's not forget that Australia is the world's third most popular study destination. Now, for a country of 22, 23 million people with a modern history of only 230 years, that's a remarkable achievement that it's the third most popular study destination. And I think that really speaks to the quality of life, but the quality of education to be found there. Of the world's top 100 universities, and again, we're talking about a country of less than 25 million population. Of the world's top 100 universities, eight of them can be found in Australia. So again, really what I want to convey is, Australia is not just a great place to be, 
it's genuinely a high caliber place to study. To, to speak about the Navitas Group's partnerships in Australia, there are 13 of them. And what this affords your students and the students in Colombia who are considering Australia as a study option is a lot of variety. Variety in terms of geography, which part of the nation you can study in. Do you want to be in a very, very big, busy, bustling city? Do you want to be in a smaller city with a quieter life? Do you want this topic of study or that course? These are all available to you due to the variety and the number of our partnerships across the nation. I just want to speak very, very briefly and not pause too long on this, but about your path to study in Australia. Many people go through the high school system and then they, they get a little bit confused. We have two avenues to study a bachelor degree in Australia, essentially. One is um, called a diploma and one is called a foundation. Both of them are shown on this graph. They, you can access these two paths to study in Australia um, at different points. Uh, depending on your academic grades, your English language, where your exit from high school is, and where it will take you into a degree. Now, this is very uh, particular to which course you want to study, which university you want to study, and your current grades. So I won't pause too long on this. Just know that there are multiple options available to you if you want to choose Australia to study. Now, um, a little bit about how to get into the foundation, which is the path to a university degree, or the diploma, which is essentially the year one of a university degree. Um, very sadly, my, um, my Spanish is not good, so I'm not going to pronounce the name of the qualification, but you can see the approximates there on the screen and the approximate English language scores you need to start a bachelor degree in Australia. Of course, as a it, is, it is Colombia. Colombia. Sorry, what did I what did I say? No, no, it's okay, but you did it perfectly. Oh, did I? Okay, thank Columbia. you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I didn't okay. know how to pronounce the um is it completion of that you you please help me with that word. Completion of back bachillerato. Thank you. See, I could never have You're achieved welcome. that without you, Carlos. Thank you. <laughs> We're here to help, no worries. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. So just to give you a little idea of the geography and the scope of this very large nation, our university partnerships, the pathways that we just spoke about and the opportunities that I've just briefly mentioned occur across most states. So again, when I say there's an ample number of variety of options to choose from, I really mean that. We're not just one university where we give you one choice, we're a group. So really, any student with any ambition, we can usually find one or two solutions for you in the very least. Now, something that I love about this nation, um, and I hope to share with your students, uh, for them to experience in person, is, as I mentioned earlier, I believe that what Australia boasts is a unique combination of a, a, a rare, magnificent, friendly, beautiful, welcoming destination, coupled with absolutely high quality, world-class education. Um, and each major city across the nation that I'm going to just briefly touch on, you will see boasts both that natural welcoming beauty, as well as the quality of education. In the, in the major city of Sydney, we partner with the University of Western Sydney, which according to the QS rankings of 2019 is in the top 3% of universities globally. Um, the University of um, Western Sydney has a very reasonable price range for courses, given it's in one of the major cities in the world and is a major university of the world. Um, we won't linger too much on prices right now because it's just too much detail and I'll address sort of prices towards the end of my presentation. But you can see that there are multiple programs offered and something unique at the University of Western Sydney, we offer a compressed two year bachelor degree. So for students who 
want a bachelor degree, but they uh, want to do it quickly, save time, save money, because you know you save money in the stu study ex uh, living expenses and quickly enter, for instance, the workforce. This is a perfect opportunity for them. In Sydney, we also um, run the Sydney city campus of La Trobe University, um, where we offer diplomas, undergraduate degrees, undergraduate pathways and also postgraduate degrees, um, multiple, multiple degrees um, from the health sciences to business to finance. Um, and I should say a very popular choice with, with students um, from Colombia in the past. There are a number of scholarships on offer for students from Colombia. Um, we will talk about them individually rather than delving into them too much for the purpose of uh, the shortness of time of this pre uh, presentation. Newcastle, just above uh, Sydney, uh, about an hour and a half drive to the north of Sydney is the beautiful beachside city of Newcastle. Right in the middle of town is the University of Newcastle. The map to the right should, should show um, the geography of where it's located. Um, it's an excellent university in, in the fields of medicine and dentistry, um, business and commerce, and engineering. It has world rankings. And what you might notice, a trend in Australia, although you have these amazingly high quality universities, when you move from a large city to a slightly smaller one like Newcastle, the cost of living as well as the cost of tuition fees do drop. You don't lose quality, you just lose you know, uh, the, the, the expenditure. So this is something to keep in mind when you're making your decision. Um, Newcastle is in, according to QS rankings of 2019, the top 1% of universities, and it's got global rankings in a whole variety of subjects. This is the new downtown campus that's just been completed and built, a very modern space age building. Um, Moving across from the east coast of Sydney and Newcastle now to um, the city of Melbourne in the southeast of Australia, another major metropolitan city. In Melbourne, what we can offer students is a pathway to La Trobe University, the same city campus that we ran in Sydney. Um, we partner with the major campus of the university in Melbourne. Um, it's again a major university with global, that boasts global rankings um, and, and provides uh, students an opportunity to study a vast, vast, vast majority of courses from the health sciences, the engineering uh, sciences, um, media and communications with a very strong uh, film and media production uh, department and a lot of associations with industry as well. Um, you can see just at a glance the accolades and the awards and the um, rankings that the university boasts. Moving on to Deakin University, also located in the very exciting city of Melbourne. Um, Deakin University is um, again ranked, uh, as you can see, all within the top few percent of universities globally. Now, um, I'll just pause on that uh, for a moment. Ranking is very important in the sense of when you graduate with a uh, when you graduate from a university with a global ranking, it really doesn't matter. I'll be honest with you, whether it's in the top one percent or the top three percent, but with a global ranking and global recognition, it truly gives you a competitive advantage when you're out there in the job market. Um, and these universities, as you say, as you see, are very proud of their the, the global recognition that comes from the innovative research that they do, the, their quality of teaching. And also one of the measures is engagement with and the success of international students. Moving on quickly to Brisbane, back to the uh, northeast coast of Australia. These are all actual photos of cities. I mean, I think um, any Australian you meet anywhere in the world is always very proud of their city and very proud of the, you know, the natural beauty of their city and, and I hope these photos begin to demonstrate why. Just outside of Brisbane is the Gold Coast, um, so two you can almost say close by and sister cities um, in both of which we have university partnerships. 
um, including Griffith University. Griffith University has a campus in the Gold Coast, which is that smaller city just outside of Brisbane, and in Brisbane, which is the cap state capital, capital of uh, Queensland. Um, the number of degrees uh, that are offered at Griffith University are too many to name everything in business, the sciences, engineering, the health sciences, so on and so forth. Um, a very diverse campus, again, students from, you'll meet students from all over the world, I believe, um, from more than, uh, more than 100 countries around the world study there. Um, a very um, old university by Australian standards, but also very modern in its research and teaching methods. I'm going to speak very briefly about um, our newest partnership in Australia, and that is with James Cook University. For anyone interested in marine and freshwater biology and marine science, I just want to mention that James Cook University, located in Cairns and Townsville, again, two smaller cities within the state of Queensland, um, is ranked globally number one in the world um, in this field. Um, part of the reason is many have heard of the Great Barrier Reef, that wonderful marine ecosystem that exists off the coast of Queensland um, of uh, coral and fishes that just live uh, in this incredible biology. Now, something I did not know until I personally visited uh, the Great Barrier Reef, apparently because it's coral and it's marine life and it's very much alive, um, it is the only visible living thing that you can see from the moon. So if one was to be on the moon and to look at the earth, the only visible living thing that, 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 that could be seen is the Great Barrier Reef. And I think that's very, very cool. Anyway, right on the border of the Great Barrier Reef in Northern Queensland is James Cook University. Not only does it have a fantastic medical and nursing school, it has a world ranked uh, marine biology school where researchers from the school both at undergraduate and postgraduate level have right literally on their doorstep within a few paces of the campus this great living marine environment so for anyone interested in exploring marine life biodiversity and ecology this is absolutely the university for you a snapshot of the city of townsville where one of the campuses is located and a snapshot of the city of Cairns, where another one of the campuses are located. Again, as you see, typical of Australia, the blending of the modern and the, and the natural landscapes. The nation's capital of Canberra is a smaller city, but a wonderful place to be a student. The University of Canberra, which is our, part, our partner university there, hosts a whole variety of courses. Canberra is geographically, you can see from the map there, located right between Sydney and Melbourne. So many people choose Canberra because it's a smaller, quieter, cheaper city to live in, but within a few hours drive you can be in Sydney and have the excitement of this major city. Um, it's also um, uh, being in the nation's capital, very well funded by government, conducts amazing world-class research and um, has, again, much like the rest of our partnerships, global rankings to be very proud of. Going over to Adelaide, another what we call a second tier city, a slightly smaller one um, to the west of Melbourne. Um, we partner with the University of Adelaide, uh, which is one of what we call the group of eight. Uh, again, in the top 1% of universities globally, many, um, many, uh, Nobel laureates have graduated from the university, world leaders, five Nobel Prize winners, in fact. Um, an amazing university with you know, outstanding globally ranked degrees, again, across business and engineering and many novel and innovative um, courses. And also um, the University of South Australia is our partner, um, with, with, which is also major, uh, which, which also has major rankings um, to be very proud of and a lot of Again, innovative fields like aviation, physiotherapy, podiatry, a lot of fields that really gets the student ready for the workforce straight away. Last but not least, to the far west of Australia, to speak for a moment about the city of Perth, where our organization, Navitas, started 25 years ago. Um, in Perth, we partner with two universities. 
um, Curtin University, um, which is an outstanding university uh, in, in, in many fields, including the health sciences, tourism and hospitality, engineering, um, and, and has welcomed many, many students. Perth is, is a very popular destination for students from Colombia and has had a number of uh, students from Colombia who've been remarkably happy there. Also too, Edith Cowan University, our very first partnership in Australia, um, sitting side by side with, uh, uh, with Curtin University um, is highly ranked for its teaching and learning quality and student satisfaction. Um, we have a number of postgraduate offerings there for people who are seeking master's degrees, um, as well as a number of uh, undergraduate pathways and degrees in everything ranging from, again, engineering, computing IT, the health sciences, globally ranked for tourism and hotel management. Um, the students are very well known to um, be some of the best prepared for the workforce and also many internship opportunities uh, in the tourism and hospitality and hotel management field to come out of students who study at Edith Cowan University. I'm just going to speak momentarily um, about a very unique campus we have um, for two reasons. First of all, it's one of the newest additions to our group. And second of all, it's based in my home city of Dubai, so I'm quite proud of this. Um, as many students may be aware, one of the Perth-based universities by the name of Murdoch University is, um, is, is an excellent university and a very popular choice for international students. We've recently partnered with uh, Murdoch University um, to run a, one of their campuses here in the city of Dubai. Now, this is a snapshot of uh, the city of Dubai. Um, the reason I wanted to speak a moment about this is Many people are choosing Dubai for two reasons. First of all, there is an opportunity, for example, for you to do an Australian degree based in one of the very exciting hubs of the world in Dubai. It's very simple and efficient to get a visa. The university takes care of the visa process. There are a lot of scholarships on offer. And what students may choose to do, for example, is to come and do their first year of an Australian degree here within the Navitas group, um, and I'm just going to highlight that it's an Australian degree taught in Dubai. And then once they've had this wonderful experience of making friends from all over the world, of adding to their resume that they've lived in this fantastic city, a global hub that's going to look excellent on your resume, then they can transfer out to Australia and complete their degree over there. So this addition to our portfolio is something that we're really happy about and uh, something that we're really proud of. And so I wanted to mention that today. Um, we offer courses at undergraduate level in commerce, IT, all the business fields, and particularly psychology and criminology, um, which is increasingly popular here. And that is all from me. I'm going to pause there, hand over to my colleague and friend Carlos for a moment. Um, and if, if there are any questions or comments or anything you'd like me to clarify, I'd be absolutely more than happy to do that. Claro, uh, Mil. Yes, Omer. Um, let me switch to Spanish a little bit. And uh, then, eh, bueno, los estamos esperando entonces con sus preguntas. Ya tenemos varias. Eh, ustedes las pueden hacer en español. Yo se las traduzco al, al uh, presentador en, en inglés. So let's start uh, with some of the questions I have here for you. Well, how is Navitas like handling the COVID situation with the students that are already in Australia and how are they, how are you guys like handling all the students that are going to apply to study in Australia or are already in the process of being accepted? That, that's an excellent question and so relevant to today's world. I mean, yeah. um, it's, it's a very sad situation that we're all in. But I have to say, I think that we've responded very, very quickly and with the interests of students in mind. So there's two parts to that question, which I'll address. Um, students who are already studying in Australia, they already have their visa, their pathway through their studies, they're already there. And students who are, for instance, in Colombia now, but they're, they're considering Australia as a study destination. In both instances, effective right now, this is something that we've been working, I can tell you, day and night on for the at least the past month, and I really mean day and night. We've designed 
all of our courses, everything that we've just spoken about, um, to be delivered in a virtual environment, exactly how I'm connecting with you all now, sitting in uh, Dubai, um, speaking to you, but in a much more sophisticated platform. So what does that mean? If a student wants to start in our next intake, let's say in May or June, they start online with exactly the same curriculum. I'm studying a Bachelor of Business with Deakin College leading to Deakin University. And they'll continue learning, uh, engaging with their lecturers, their coursework, the online platforms. We have a world class. It's, it's what we actually call a virtual classroom because it's as yep. though you're engaging with all of your colleagues. Now, they do that. The moment the borders open and the moment the situation's resolved, and we all pray that this happens sooner rather than later, we will work with you, um, with both your agency, Carlos, and as well as the individual students, to make sure that the students transfer and continue their studies face to face. Now, it might be a month, it might be five months, we don't know, but we don't want your students to lose time. We want them to be able to start next month. Equally, the students who are in Australia, 100% of classes have switched to online. So students can have uninterrupted learning in the safety of their home. Okay, perfect. Uh, Omi, I am sharing uh, my background to, sh to show the, like the, the people who are here with us, uh, our fair, like the, the first part of, this, of the fair, right? So, but I have more questions for you, okay? Are you listening? Please, I'm, I'm ready to go anytime. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, well, we have a very good question here. Let me check. So, if I have the IELTS, like the minimum IELTS, and I wish to apply, how would I apply it to the programs? I mean, how, what is the process of applying to any of the programs you have? And another linked question there, you know that to present the IELTS, you have to go to a place and, and do it in written. How are you dealing with those countries that are like, like the students that are not being able to deliver the exam like physically? Do you have an internal exam? No? I, I love that question because uh, I have more good news. <laughs> um, as part of our response to this COVID situation and moving all our teaching and learning online temporarily, um, we've also uh, been very realistic to say, well, if the student's safety is number one for us and you know, we want them to be at home for now and we, we don't want them out looking for an IELTS test or whatever, Equally, what we've done is um, got an agreement from all of our partnerships across Australia for students to be able to do home-based tests. Beyond today's presentation, Carlos, I'll share that full list. It, it ranges from Duolingo to a number of things students can do at home in the safety of their own home, and we will accept that as their language level. Um, so I think that, that should come as good news. Um, the second, uh, sorry, the first question, which is about get, getting language up to the level, um, we offer comprehensive uh, language, pre-university language courses. So once we assess, it might be the case that we say to a student, you know, um, we believe you should study X amount of weeks of pure language studies, pre-sessional language, before you start your bachelor degree. And we'll, we'll put that together in what we call a package to offer. So the student's studies from language through to degree is totally uninterrupted. Okay, very good. Um, now, we have, I mean, there's a student asking, and um, I mean, his name is Carlos Rodriguez. Um, I know that Australia gives me one month of vacation. If I enroll for six months in a course, in an English course uh, with you, because you, already, you also have English programs, um, these vacations are at the end of my course, or can I like choose the moment where to have them? That's, that, that's also a good question. It will, it will vary depending on when you start your course, Carlos. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. 
when it comes to academic degrees, we usually have three intakes per year. So that's quite set. Um, that's why I said, you know, you might want to start your academic degree in May, June, because that's our next intake. And then there's September, October, and then there's January, February. So that's firm. When it comes to language, we're much more flexible. Language actually for us in Australia starts every week. <laughs> so um, it might be the case that, that you start on a week that falls, let's say over the Christmas holidays in two weeks time. So you would naturally have a few weeks break. It might happen that you know, you want to study with us in September, your academic course, but you need two months of language beforehand. So you see what I mean? There's so many different combinations of when you will start your language, but I can assure you that it's, it's quite flexible. As an international student, you get a number of breaks throughout the year. Um, you get summer holidays, you get midterm breaks, you get Christmas holidays. Um, there will be plenty of chance to um, have a break from your studies and come back refreshed to your studies. Okay, very good. Now we have, um, can I like combine CDUs and certificate or programs? If I've understood the question correctly, we offer a yep. number of um, double degrees. So sometimes a student, for example, will want to study uh, a Bachelor of Law combined with a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, a very good friend of mine studied a Bachelor of Law combined with a Bachelor of Media because he wanted to become an entertainment lawyer and is a very su successful entertainment lawyer. Um, I've known people to combine, again, business with... Uh, 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 business with engineering because they want to become a scientist but have to have a very strong business background. So if I've understood correctly about combining courses, yes, Australia is very flexible in terms of what we call double degrees or double majors and it's also very flexible again in what, what we call a major and a minor. So you can do one single track degree with a major and a minor, so Bachelor of Economics with a major in um, uh, business management and a minor in supply chain and logistics. I'm just giving examples or mm -hmm. an actual dual degree where you graduate with two degrees. These are mm -hmm. always available to you depending on your career aspirations and your interests. Okay, we have a very good question here. Let me check. Um, what is the percentage of employability that international students have after completing a higher education program in Australia? A really good question. Yeah, um, I um, I moved from Australia to Dubai, the UAE, eleven years ago, and as I left the country, um, I'm I'm giving you my personal experience because statistics are incredibly important, but at the same time, um, you know, the experience of the individual um, matters. I think a lot. Um, when I left Australia, it was around um, 2009, um, and I can tell you the following, and this is all verifiable. Australia was the only English-speaking Western country on earth in 2009 that did not go through the global recession. The economy is remarkably strong. It's a young country um, with a small population, and I think that combination of being a young country with a small population means that the resources of which there are many from mining and minerals and iron ore and all these different natural resources to human resources are, are, are so plentiful. So Australia is in many senses the land of opportunity. Um, when you benchmark employment rates in Australia, that it always ranks as excellent globally. Um, and well, here's the other thing that we do, um, and I'm happy to share this with, with your student, Carlos. Um, okay. Maybe on today, I'll share some documents with you and maybe you can pass them on. In okay, our, of course. If, every year we publish for every one of our university partnerships a brochure. What we also do, because we're very proud of it, is we run, we uh, write up student average starting salaries. Um, so, for instance, at Deakin University, which has an amazing architecture program, 
we write that according to these official surveys, an architecture graduate from Deakin University earns on average X amount. And when I, when I meet with parents and students and they see these amounts, they're surprised and they say, this is impossible, it's too high. And I say to them, just remember, what is the formula for opportunity? A very young modern country with a very, very low population. So Australia is desperate for smart, active, hardworking young people from Colombia and from other countries to come and explore and build. That's why Australia is so welcoming to international students. So I, I've given a lengthy answer, but I've, I've, I hope I've been able to share some of the experience and certainly I'll, by sharing a couple of the brochures, you'll see with things like employability statistics that um, I can truly summarize in the word, word excellent. Okay, perfect. We have another question here. Um, I have been told that Australia has a lot of Latinos, you know, people from Latin America or, or Spanish speaking countries or Spanish speaking students. What destination do you recommend uh, where the amount of, the amount of Latinos uh, is very, very little? Sure. Um, th there is a, a lot of Latinos in Australia, um, but there's people from many, many countries in Australia. So um, my city of Melbourne, I'll give you a statistic. Um, Melbourne uh, has 50% of its population born outside of Australia. Um, another really interesting statistic about my city of Melbourne is... After Athens, the capital of Greece, the second highest population of Greek people in the world is in Melbourne. So the Greek people in Melbourne have a joke and they say, maybe we should become the capital of Greece because we have so many Greek people. So Australia is a wonderfully, wonderfully multicultural country with people from everywhere, every corner of the world live in Australia and, and very importantly, live harmoniously in Australia. Um, you know, there are churches, there are mosques, there are synagogues, there's religious freedom, there's, you know, people live in their community. Everything is so wonderfully peaceful in Australia because everyone has the same experience. That's my first point. The second point, where are there less Latinos? And I can understand because maybe you want to, you know, experience speaking English and meeting people from different places. I would actually say of the cities, the major cities I spoke about, um, probably in Queensland, Brisbane, Townsville, Cairns, Adelaide and Canberra, the population is probably a little, uh, the communities are a little smaller than elsewhere. Okay. Okay, another question, and this is a very good, and it comes from Andrea. Um, what are the advantages that the government gives for me taking my professional training in the country? Thanks for the question, Andrea. Um, so you would be entering Australia or your studies in Australia as what we call a full fee paying international student. So you would be going to Australia, um, you know, with your own resources to study. Now, once you're there, the opportunities are huge and plentiful. There are things like internship opportunities while you study. You are allowed by the government on your student visa to work 40 hours per two weeks in, in term time and unlimited during your breaks. So the government, the visa allows you to work and earn some money while you're over there. There are world-class postgraduate um, work opportunities. So there are newly created visa types where once you finish your degree, you'll be allowed to switch onto this work visa, stay on and use your skills to work in the country. Now, when you combine those things, you, you'll notice one thing. And I'll go back to that earlier point. Australia is a young country with a low population, with a lot of opportunities. And Australia is a multicultural population that welcomes expertise from abroad. So the fact that the government is saying to you, once you finish your studies, please stay on and, and you know, explore your work potential here if you wish to do that. 
um, I think is a fantastic opportunity for any international student. Um, so these are among some of the um, opportunities available to you. Okay, perfect. We have another question here. Um, with my bachillerato title, with my high school diploma, Colombian high school diploma, can I go direct to the universities in Australia? I mean, your universities? Certainly. It, it, it depends on the GPA and the course that you want. Um, but what we can do for you um, through, through your agency, Carlos, and through our colleagues yep. is we can do an yep. assessment for the student and give okay. them an answer very quickly. So we can say, for instance, yes, with your GPA, with your language skills, et cetera, you qualified, you know, here you are direct into a year one of a bachelor degree, or actually, no, I think you do better if you do this pre-sessional course. So we can give a formal assessment very, very quickly. But yes, the opportunity absolutely exists depending on the GPA and language skills. Okay, perfect. We have another good question from Andrea. It is, how important it is the university level to get good job opportunities in Australia, considering that there is a classification? Excellent question. Um, I, I, I pointed out earlier today that all of our partnerships in Australia are in the top few percent of global universities. And I also mentioned that when you're in the top few percent, I believe it really doesn't matter where in those few percent you are. Um, I'll mention why. By the way, something really important. Um, Australia does not have, despite what I said, a university ranking system. Australia does not rank its own universities because according to the Australian education system, all of the universities must be excellent for them to exist. There are only 40 universities in Australia and they're all globally ranked. So if they aren't, they, they wouldn't even have a license to become a university. Now, I'll just pause there and because you'd probably be thinking, Andrea, then why do you have rankings? All the rankings, the QS and everything that I quoted are international rankings, judging Australian universities from abroad. So now I'll pause and get to your question. Ranking okay. does matter. It, it is important. It's, it's a good thing to have when you come to employer X and say, hey, I came from this university. It's in the top 1% or 2%. It's important. Univer um, universities are known to big companies, et cetera, et cetera. But what's equally important, and this is what I love about Australian education, it's very holistic, is the work that you did, for instance, with your professors during your degree, the internship that you did is very important, um, you know, the other sort of extracurricular activities and clubs that you were involved with, which goes on your CV, your grades at university, your GPA at university, did you do really well and win a scholarship after one, two? years. This is important to an employer. So personally, for my son or daughter or for myself or for my best friend, I would say go to a mid-ranking university, save some money, do really, really well, get a scholarship, get an internship, get an amazing resume, then go to a very expensive university and do poorly, if that makes sense. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does. It does. So I just wanted to... Um... Let me check here. Start screen. Thank you very much, um, Omid, because it was very, very good, the, the, the presentation. Um, thank you very much for your time. I, we know that is very late in, in your country. So thank you very much. Um, just, I know, I don't know, I mean, say goodbye to the people and I will show them after you say goodbye, I will show all the, the people that are in like the conference uh, how to go to your STEM, okay? Um, Carlos, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with, uh, speak with uh, um, these, these people who've asked such great questions. So I, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the engagement of the questions. Thank you for the opportunity. And um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, choosing your destination for study is one of the most important decisions you'll make in your life. Um, so take your time, speak to Carlos and his colleagues, gather as much information as you can um, and, and, and make the right decision. And I'll just end by saying, and do keep in mind, if 
Australia is your decision at the end of the day. Um, we, we've set it up such that there's no interruption to your study. There's online courses available to you immediately. And yeah, look forward to welcoming you. Thank you all yeah. very, very Thank much. you very much. Thank you very much, Amit. And your English, my God, everyone can understand it. Very good. Thank you. Ahora les voy a mostrar, chicos, cómo eh, llegar a la página, cómo inscribirnos bien rapidito y cómo llegar al, al stand de... Navitas Austral. Aquí entonces estoy dirigiéndome al, al stand. Voy a salirme. Voy a poner eh, entrar al pabellón general. Yo debo entrar a feriaonline.expostudiar.com. Ahí ingreso y pongo ingresar en la parte superior organizo, ingresar, si ya tienen la contraseña o registrarme si la van a hacer ¿sí? aquí en registrarme me van a dar solamente me van a hacer solamente unas pocas preguntas el nombre, el apellido, el usuario con que quiero registrarme, la contraseña el correo electrónico y el teléfono de contacto yo me voy a entrar con mi contraseña que ya tengo eh, lista para el momento luego le doy en ingresar y inmediatamente la página me redirecciona a la fachada de la, de la feria. En la fachada les voy a explicar un par de cosas para que lo vean y, y sepan qué hacer. Mientras nos cargan un segundo, porque como tenemos el zoom abierto, eh, puede ser un poquito el lento, pero ya nos va a cargar. También enseguida les voy a recordar nuestro Instagram para que vayan e ingresen y tengan interacción con nuestros asesores. Vamos a darle aquí refrescar, que ya está cargando. Ahí está cargando perfectamente. Bueno, Expo Estudiar, mientras carga, Expo Estudiar ha sido una feria absolutamente exitosa. Hemos tenido eh, alrededor de 7000 usuarios eh, en la feria y pues la verdad se los recomiendo entrar porque... Eh, les va a permitir conversar uno a uno con los representantes de las escuelas y definitivamente van a poder resolver las dudas que tengan entonces ya me registré ya estoy en la, en la plataforma y en la parte derecha van a ver diferentes links a pabellón naranja, pabellón azul que es donde están las escuelas no hay ninguna diferenciación es solamente para que tengan más espacio de, de visualización entidades asociadas que es donde está eh, Education New Zealand, donde está el stand de nuestra empresa que es estudiar, etc. Vamos a entrar, por ejemplo, al stand de Australia, Navitas Australia. Entonces le doy clic en el link o en el eh, nombre Pabellón Naranja. También podrían hacerlo en el azul y explorar otras escuelas. Y de ahí ya buscan el, la escuela, dándole clic o poniendo el cursor encima del stand, van a ver los nombres. Si ustedes lo ven aquí, yo ya entré al de Navitas Australia y aquí está la información. Luego en los, en los stands, ustedes también podrán, voy a entrar por ejemplo al de Navitas de Estados Unidos, ustedes podrán ingresar también a la opción de eh, crear web, es decir, web, eh, tener un chat web con el, con el expositor, realmente se llama video chat, les voy a mostrar en, en alguno. Aquí dice video chat en la parte inferior. Si yo le doy clic, a mí me va a llevar directamente al WhatsApp y de esa manera voy a poder eh, entrar a conversar con los expositores. Espero entonces que haya sido de mucha ayuda eh, para ubicarse en el tema de estudiar en Australia esta charla. De nuevo, les agradezco infinitamente estar en nuestra feria y los invito a explorar los stands. Que estén bien.